Henry, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. And we know that you're making television programs. It's yeah. available anywhere on YouTube, right? That's correct. Digging for Truth. Yeah, Digging for Truth. And I've been watching the programs. It's fascinating because you cover a lot of archaeological things and some other things. But you are also running the uh, Associates for Biblical Research. You're doing the current dig in Shiloh. Right. So give me some of the details of Digging for Truth. Why do you do it? What are some of the things that you like to do on your TV show? Sure. And then what's the latest at Shiloh? Yeah, so we've been doing Digging for Truth over five years. We got over 200 and some episodes. We cover a vast variety of subjects. You know, uh, archaeology is sort of the centerpiece or the heartbeat of what we do, you know, and its relationship to the scriptures. But then also archaeology, you can't talk about archaeology without talking about worldview, paradigms, the way that people think about the world, the way they think about where the Bible came from and so on. So the goal of our half hour show is to demonstrate or to show to people the coherence of Christianity, the historical reliability, the authority of scripture and so on. So, you know, there's a sort of a uh, going back and forth between other subjects and archaeology, but we always come back to that because that's been our main work over the 50 years of ministry that we've been doing. And uh, you mentioned Shiloh, which is where we've been excavating for a number of years. And you're also connected with not only Shiloh and the incredible finds that are coming out of that, but also the Wet Sift Project from the Mount Ebal uh, site and the amazing discovery of Dr. Scott Stripling, part of your group, of the curse tablet. So talk about the curse tablet for a second. How exciting is that? Yeah, I mean, it's beyond exciting. It's a, it's a groundbreaking, earth-shattering discovery. You know, a, a tablet with a curse written on it with the name of Yahweh in a context of around 12, 1300 BC. So we're talking very early. These, these are typically from later periods, right? In an altar on the Mount of Cursing and an altar that the evidence looks like could be from the time of Joshua. Uh, I think the evidence is pretty strong, actually. So, you know, we look at evidence, uh, not just as singular pieces, but as a matrix of evidence. So the, so the curse tablet is remarkable in and of itself. And we did find it in wet, what's called wet sifting, which is a, a, process, a new process that we use with water to find finds that have normally been missed. But it is related to a bigger picture, the reliability of the Bible, its origin, when the text was written. That's a big controversy, right? And what we're saying is, boy, it looks like this text was written at a time right when the Bible records these events occurred. And that's a paradigm-shaking, earth-shattering kind of discovery. We're excited about it. We hope. We hope uh, the listeners are too. Just like archeology, span you have all these layers. That one find has so many different layers to it, it not just the archeology span of it and yeah. where it was found, but also the the, the script and, and so many other things on there in the name of God. So that's really exciting. And I was able to film on Mount Ebal with Dr. Stripling a few years before he found it. And he told me, he said, I wish we could come back here and wet sift. And sure enough, it happened. So. How excited are you about all of these archaeological discoveries, not just the ones that you guys are finding, but all of them, especially in Israel, that are lining up with what the Bible said, the reliability of the biblical text, when there's a lot of scientists and archaeologists actually don't think the Bible is reliable, right. but you're finding the opposite is true? Yeah, there's, there's, so, there's so much to say about that. I, I think the, the first thing is the encouragement for the church to say, when you read the text of Scripture, if this is truly what we claim it to be, and that is the word of God coming from the creator. Uh, that has great implications in terms of what it's reporting and what it's saying, uh, because it's coming from an infinite being, okay? We would say that it's reliable as a resource, necessarily reliable. And then when you dig in the ground, you compare what you find to that text, and it's consistent with it. Either it confirms specifics or a general background, cultural practices, cities, places, architecture, persons, kings, all those kind of things. And ever since I got saved, I, I believed instantly that the Bible is the Word of God. I didn't need archaeology, but archaeology is a minister to the text. And for some people, it's really helpful to them to be drawn into the history of the text and realize, wait a minute, I can believe that these stories are not stories, but they really happened. What I learned in Sunday school happened on the ground. And I think for some people, when they realize that, 
they realize ultimately that the salvation that comes through Jesus happened on the ground. And when you grasp that truth, it's life transforming. And that's where we hope people go to when they see what we do in the ministry of ABR. Appreciate all that you do, Henry, and keep up the great work. Thank you very much. It's a privilege. Hey, I hope you enjoyed our program on YouTube. We want to continue to provide you some great videos on God, the Bible, and how it all connects with our world. It would really help us if you would consider subscribing to the InGrace YouTube channel. We would also like to have you comment. We will try to read and respond to them. And we also need you to hit the notification button and like the InGrace episode that you just saw. These ways will help more people hear about InGrace and more people hear the gospel of grace.